there any dangers associated with the sport? But the danger is getting involved with anabolic steroids, which I'm totally against. Lou Ferrigno is an American actor and bodybuilder who won an IFBB Mr. America title and two consecutive IFBB Mr. Universe titles and appeared in the documentary film Pumping Iron. But the question that arises is, what does Lou Ferrigno have to say on his intake of steroids? Let's go ahead and find out what he himself has to say on the matter. Ferrigno's Journey If you do not know much about him, let us enlighten you. Lou is the only person to win Mr. Universe twice. Also, he was the tallest, 6 foot 6 inches, and the youngest man, 21 years. Winning the award was a cornerstone of Ferrigno's life. In 1969, Ferrigno began his bodybuilding career. He won the crown of Mr. America and Mr. Universe in the same year. After that, he became one of the elite bodybuilders. His determination did not stop there, though. He started focusing on his debut at Mr. Olympia. Also, he was among the youngest participants in the Mr. Olympia contest. Although he did not get first place, he amazed everyone by getting second place. Afterward, his documentary on pumping iron got past Arnold Schwarzenegger's records. It was a significant factor in Ferrigno's fame. But unfortunately, this fame was not enough to help him win the Mr. Olympia contest. Also, in World's Strongest Man 1977, he ended up fourth among eight. Lou continued to struggle at the 1992 Mr. Olympia and earned 12th position. Later, he worked harder and reappeared in the Masters Olympia in 1994 with a renewed sense of commitment. This guy was so incredibly big that he could be painted green and be called the real Hulk. Massive Following Before we dive into the secrets of Ferrigno's steroid use, let's first establish just how well-known this bodybuilder is. Lou Ferrigno has 286k followers on Instagram and 72.3k followers on Twitter, showing his immense global fan base. Lou made an even larger fan base through the magazines. Impressed by his massive physique, companies offered him cover photos in their magazines. Some of the popular magazines include Muscle Builder, Strength and Health, Natural Bodybuilding, Iron Man, Bodybuilding Lifestyle, Muscular Development, and Muscle Mag International. His first TV series was The Incredible Hulk, which earned him great fame. Because of his size, Lou could play the original Hulk to perfection. Some other films Lou worked in include Hercules, 1983, The Adventures of Hercules, 1985, Desert Warrior, 1988, and God Spoke, 1993. The Hulk gained immense popularity due to his size, physique, and amazing display. His fans admired the work and effort behind his success and wanted to know more about him. Ferrigno's Workout How did the Hulk gain those bulks? We know you're waiting for those steroid bits and we assure you those are coming. However, you just can't get so big on steroids alone. Surely beast workouts have a role to play in such. To sum that statement up, if you want to change your body composition, you'll want to train with volume. If you want to build strength, you'll want a program that is strength specific for the lifts you want to improve, such as the bench press, squat, and deadlift. Lou's training was 80 minutes a day and 6 days a week. He always performed 40 minutes of cardio and 30 minutes of resistance training. Also, he usually did powerlifting with machines and the other 25% with free weights. Lou performed each exercise in 3-5 to five sets of 6 reps. In addition, he used a split day workout to train a muscle group a day. Sunday was his rest day. Lou focused on working weaker muscles first. At 69, the only change in his workout routine is that he is lifting lighter weights. However, Lou has the same passion for his fitness. Ferrigno's Diets Did the Hulk eat like the Hulk? Well, you may be surprised to hear, but Lou Ferrigno actually never compromised on his low-calorie diet. Also, when filming, he could not do his workout routine. So instead, Ferrigno sustained his 250-pound body by following his diet. His diet included eggs, fish, fruits, vegetables, beef, chicken, and various nutritional supplements. The staple of most bodybuilders' diets is chicken breast, brown rice, and broccoli. Overall, he ate 3,500 calories per day. Ferrigno's diet was enough for his muscular maintenance. He never compromised on his supplements before and after workouts, and that is the secret behind his 315-pound off-season weight. The infamous steroids. You all may be wondering whether or not Lou was one of the steroid takers. Let us delve deeper to understand his take on steroids. Steroid use is not uncommon in the bodybuilding field. Many bodybuilders use anabolic steroids to enhance their physical attributes and make them ready for various competitions. In several interviews, Lou Ferrigno has not clearly admitted to the use of anabolic steroids for competitions. Despite having used steroids himself, Lou had quite a surprising opinion about the same. On numerous occasions, 
he admitted to not supporting the use of steroids for bodybuilding. He further went on to say that steroids should be banned from being used. Lou Ferrigno claimed that steroids were one of the reasons that led to his retirement. He stands by the fact that steroids have several risks and health complications which he did not favor. Some people believe taking anabolic steroids will help them become fit and healthy. This isn't necessarily true. Taking anabolic steroids is a dangerous drug habit. Anabolic steroids are Class C drugs which can only be issued by pharmacists with a prescription. Regularly taking anabolic steroids can lead to physical and psychological changes in both men and women, as well as potentially dangerous medical conditions, and it seems Lou understands said fact, albeit not to the point of curbing his own steroid use. Yourself had any experience with anabolic steroids? Yes, I have taken steroids years ago under a doctor's care. I have experimented with steroids when I uh, competed, and it's sad to see many young children taking steroids because they think it's a shortcut. His views on steroids. It's interesting to get a legend like Lou Ferrigno share his thoughts on it, mostly because he crosses the bridge between the niche sport and mainstream pop culture. When it comes to the subject of steroid use, Lou Ferrigno makes it clear that steroids are not necessary to make the sport great. He doesn't dispute that some pro bodybuilders use these drugs. Instead, he points out that the most talented athletes in bodybuilding would still be superstars with or without steroids. He states that every single Olympia champion would still be champion. The hard work, genetics, and mindset take higher precedent over steroids. The steroids simply add a freak factor to the entire proceedings. Overall, he also thinks that the perception of steroid use is overblown by the mainstream populace. This goes alongside other stereotypes, like bodybuilders being dumb. This is largely due to how small the sport is compared to the bigger sports landscape. The caricatures of bodybuilders stand out more than the actual, real-life athletes themselves. The reality, of course, is that most bodybuilders are very intelligent. The amount of knowledge of dieting, nutrition, and training science is massive in order to be a successful pro bodybuilder. If simply any meathead person who wanted to be manly could be a bodybuilder, then there would be way more bodybuilders in the world. Steroid, it only is the anabolic effect. If you work out, it just gives you that little more. But if you take drugs away from all the champions, they're still going to be champions, maybe 20% left. I think drugs are not good for you. The Visible Clues Now, how could a person's intake of steroids be recognized? Lou Ferrigno's was quite obvious. Let us tell you how. Lou was on a vast number of anabolic steroids. All of these anabolic steroids were taken just as often as they'd eat meals. He's probably the second most successful bodybuilder in history after Arnold himself. He trained six days per week almost full-body workouts every other day and occasionally daily. Yes, now anyone who takes their training seriously in the slightest will realize the number of anabolic steroids he was obviously on to train this way. His routine was wide grip pull-ups, squats, deadlifts, close grip pull-ups, overhead presses, leg presses and shoulder raises all at once. His amazing size, easily the largest bodybuilder of his era at 6.5, 275 pounds, complete with a 60-inch chest. Unlike many of the other bodybuilders from his era, he's now approaching 60 years of age, and you know what? He still looks better than 99% of the population. So if you ask us if he was taking steroids, the answer is yes. As it shows, his supplement intake was also very noticeable. However, winners don't quit and quitters don't win. Lou showed his determination till the end of time and is still in shape for all competitions to come. That's all we have for you folks. See you next time.